Hi, welcome to this Corp Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at how to work out the distance between two points. So if we've got two points, how to work out the distance between them. And we're going to be using Pythagoras' theorem to do that. So if we've got these two points, A and B, so point A has got coordinates 2, 3, and the point B has got coordinates 10, 9, and we wanted to work out the distance between the points A and B, my first step would be to join them up like so. So we've now joined up A and B, and then what we're going to do is we're going to make a right angle triangle, because once we've made a right angle triangle, we can then use Pythagoras' theorem to work out the length of AB. So let's make a right angle triangle by going across, and then when we're directly below B, we then go up, like so, and now we've got our right angle triangle, so that's a right angle there, and we can work out the length of this side, and we can work out the length of this side. So in terms of the base of the triangle, if we have a look at it, well, the point A is two across, so we're going from two across to 10 across, so all together we're going eight across. So the length of that side is eight, and then in terms of the height of the triangle, well, we're going from a height of three up to a height of nine. So that means we're going to be going up another six. That means the length of this side is six. So this triangle has got a base of eight and a height of six, and we want to find the length of the diagonal. And let's just label the side A, B, X. So that's what we're trying to work out, the distance between the points A and B. So let's just write down Pythagoras' theorem. So Pythagoras' theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And let's just label the sides of our right angle triangle. So A and B are the two shorter sides, and C is the longest side, or the hypotenuse. So in terms of the longer side, that's the one opposite the right angle. So this side is going to be our C, and it means that A and B are these two sides. And it doesn't actually matter which way around you label them. I like to call A the smaller one and B the one that's slightly bigger. Uh, but it doesn't actually matter which way around you label those. But C has to be that hypotenuse. So C is the one opposite the right angle, and that's our X. Now let's replace the a, the b, and the c in Pythagoras' theorem with our values. So instead of a squared, we're going to write 6 squared, and then plus, and then instead of b squared, we're going to write 8 squared, and then that equals c squared, and c is x, that's x squared. Now let's work this out. 6 squared, well 6 times 6, now if this was a calculator question, you could do 6 times 6 in your calculator, or 6 squared, and find out what that is. This is a non-calculator question, this one, so 6 squared is 36 plus, and then 8 squared, 8 times 8 would be 64, and that's equal to x squared. Okay, now let's work out what 36 plus 64 is. 36 plus 64 is 100, so that's 100 equals x squared. So that means that x squared is 100. Now this side's obviously not 100, we now need to find out what x is, so we're going to work out the square root of 100. To get rid of the square root, we're going to square root the 100. So x is equal to the square root of 100. And the square root of 100 is 10, because 10 times 10 is 100, so x is equal to 10. So that means the distance between the points A and B is 10. So that's it, that's the distance between the points A and B, 10. And that's it. So in this question, we use Pythagoras' theorem to work out the distance between two points, A and B. Okay, let's have a look at another question. Okay, so here's another question. We've got the point C here and the point D here, and we've been asked to calculate the length of the line CD, and we've been asked to give our answer to one decimal place. So this time, rather than being asked to work out the distance between the points, we've been asked to work out the length of the line CD. So it's the same approach. We'll still use Pythagoras' theorem, so we'll make a right angle triangle and use Pythagoras' theorem to work out the length of the line. Now, this question says to give our answer to one decimal place, so this is going to be a calculator question where we're going to be using our calculator rather than non-calculator. So we've got the point C, which has got coordinates negative 4, 3, and the point D, which has got coordinates 2, 0. And we want to work out the length of that line CD. So let's make our little right angle triangle. So let's do a little right angle triangle, like so. And we'll put our little right angle in there to show this is a right angle triangle. Now let's work out this distance and work out this distance. So to get from this point here to this point here, well, this is minus four across and this is two across. So that means we'll be going six across to get from here to here. We're going to be going six across from there to there. And then in terms of the height, well, this one had a height of three and this one's got a height of zero. So that means the length of this side is equal to three. So we've got this triangle, it's a right angle triangle. This distance is six because we're going from minus four to two. So that's six across. And then in terms of the height, this is has got a height of 3, this has got a height of 0, so the height of the triangle, this distance here would be 3. And now we want to use Pythagoras' theorem, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's label our sides, a and b are the two shorter sides, and c is the hypotenuse, the longer side. So let's label the longer side c, so that's the longer side, the one opposite the right angle is c, and the two shorter sides would be a and b. And you could label those a and b the other way around if you wanted to, but it's not really going to matter. Okay, now we've got Pythagoras' theorem. Let's replace the a, the b, and the c with the values. So instead of a squared, we're going to write 3 squared, so 3 squared plus. Instead of b squared, we're going to write 6 squared. And instead of c squared, well, we've labeled it c, so it's just going to be c squared. That's the length of the line cd. 
Okay, now let's work this out. Now it's a calculator question. You could do three squared is nine and six squared is equal to 36 and write nine plus 36. Or you could just write down three squared plus six squared in your calculator or type that into your calculator and press equals and that gives you 45. So we've got 45 equals C squared. I've just put in my calculator, press three squared plus six squared. And that's given me an answer of 45. Okay, now the length of this line is obviously not 45. That's far too big. So now we want to work out what C is. So we need to square root. C will be equal to the square root of 45. And if we work out the square root of 45, the square root of 45 is equal to 3 root 5 or 6.7082 and so on. Now, in terms of this question, we've asked us to give our answer to the one decimal place. So because it's 6.70, we're going to round out the one decimal place to be 6.7. So that means our answer would be 6.7. That's the length of that line to one decimal place, 6.7. And that's it. So if we wanted to work out the length of that line CD, we could just use Pythagoras' theorem. Now at this point, I just want to point out that if I'm ever asked to find the distance between two points or the length of a line, I just automatically do a little right angle triangle and work out the length of the line using Pythagoras' theorem, and I just use my intuition to work that out. You may encounter a formula, so if you're using a textbook, an A-level textbook or something like that, you may encounter this formula given to you for the length of a line. And it's this formula, it's the distance between the points is equal to the square root of, and then in brackets, x2 minus x1 squared plus, and then in brackets, y2 minus y1 close bracket squared. And then you just work this out and it'll tell you the distance between the two points. What it's saying is x2 minus x1, that's the difference between their horizontal positions. So that's telling you the, the length of the base of the triangle. And then y2 minus y1, that's the height of the triangle. It tells you the distance between their heights. And then whenever you're squaring them, that's what it, you do in Pythagoras' theorem. You square the length of those two sides, you add them together, and then you square root it. So if you encounter that formula, that's what you're doing. You're just working out the distance between the horizontal positions, the distance between the vertical positions, and then you're using Pythagoras' theorem to work out the length of the line. So that's just to explain that if you see that formula, not to be daunted by it, you're just using Pythagoras' theorem. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Now this time we've got a sketch of some points on a grid, so it's not drawn accurately. And we've been asked to calculate the length of the line AB. So we've got the point A, which is negative four, two, and the point B, which is eight, six. And we've been asked to calculate the length of this line and to give our answer to two decimal places. Okay, so if I wanted to find the length of this line, I would do a little sketch of a right angle triangle. So I'll just go across and then up. And that's a right angle triangle. Now in terms of the base of the triangle, this has got a horizontal position of minus four. The horizontal position at this point is eight. So to get from minus four to eight, we're going, to, we're going 12 across. We're going 12 across to get from minus four to eight. So that means the base of the triangle is 12. And then in terms of the height of the triangle, this point's got a height of two, this point's got a height of six. So the difference between the heights is four. So we're going up another four to get to this point here. So we've now got a right angle triangle where we've got the length of this side and the length of this side, the length of the two shorter sides. We can now use Pythagoras' theorem to work out the length of the line AB. So let's do that. So let's label the sides. I'm going to call A and B the two shorter sides and the side opposite the right angle triangle, the longer side is C, the hypotenuse. So Pythagoras' theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A squared, well that's going to be 4 squared plus B squared, that's going to be 12 squared, is equal to C squared, which is the longest side here, which I'm just going to call C squared. Now, 4 squared is 16, and 12 squared is 144, and that's equal to C squared. Now, we're going to add these together, and this is a calculator question. It says give our answer to two decimal places, so 16 plus 144 is equal to 160. So we've got 160 is equal to C squared. So that means that C is equal to, obviously this side's not the 160, we're going to square root it. So C is equal to the square root of 160. And when we square root 160, we get an answer of... 12.6491064. And we've been asked to give our answer to two decimal places. So our answer to two decimal places would be 12 point, and then we've got 649, so we're going to round up, so it'd be 65. So the length for the line AB is 12.65, the two decimal places, and that's it. Okay, so I found the length of the line AB. Now I'm just going to actually do this question again using the formula. So I'm going to use the distance between the two points is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 close bracket squared plus y2 minus y1 close bracket squared. So we've got our two points A and B and we've got the coordinates minus 4, 2 and 8, 6. So let's label them. Let's call this one x1, y1. So that's our first point, x1, y1. And our second point, we're going to call that x2, y2. And then if we wanted to work out the distance between them, we can just use the formula that's equal to the square root of, and then we've got x2 minus x1, so x2 minus x1, so it's going to be 8, which is x2, minus x1, which is minus 4, so it's going to be 8 minus minus 4, so 8 subtract minus 4, close bracket squared, plus, and then we've got y2 minus y1, so it's going to be 6 is y2, subtract y1, which is 2, so 6 minus 2, close bracket squared.
And then if we do the square root of 8 minus minus 4, remember we have to work out what's inside the brackets first of all using our order of operations. So we've got 8 minus minus 4, so it's going to be 8 plus 4 because we're always subtracting a negative where it's the same as adding. So 8 plus 4 will be 12, so we're going to have 12 close bracket squared, and then plus, and then in this bracket, 6 minus 2 is 4, so it's going to be 4 squared. Now at this point, we could just type this into our calculator if we wanted to and work it out, or we could do the square root of 12 squared is 144, plus 4 squared is 16, so we're going to get the square root of 160, which we've had already, and that's equal to 12.64911 and so on and the two decimal places that'll be 12.65 and that's it and that shows you this formula works as well okay and let's have a look at one last question so this time we've been asked to work out the distance between the points negative 5 negative 8 and 4 4 okay so if i was to do this question the first thing i would do is i would do a sketch okay so i've just sketched the axes the x-axis and the y-axis and let's just sketch where our points are so negative five negative eight so it'll be negative five along here and negative eight down there so it'll be there and that's the point negative five negative eight and then we've got the point four four so that's four across and four up so it'll be there so it's point four four and we've been asked to work out the distance between those two points so we want to work out the distance between those points so now what we're going to do is we're just going to join them up and we've joined up our points and let's make our little right angle triangle so let's go across and then let's go up. And it's a right angle triangle. Now in terms of the going across the horizontal position, this point here, it's minus five along, and this point here is four along. So to get from minus five across to four, we're gonna be going nine across. So to get from minus five to four, we're gonna be going nine across. And then in terms of the height, the height of this point is minus eight, and the height of this point is four. So we're gonna be going up from minus eight up to four, so it's gonna be going up 12 altogether. So we've got that this is nine across, and this is 12 up. So let's write down Pythagoras' theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And let's label the sides. a and b are the two shorter sides, a and b, and c is the longer side, the hypotenuse one opposite the right angle, so this side will be c. And now let's substitute in our values. So instead of a squared, it'll be 9 squared, plus, and instead of b squared, it's going to be 12 squared, and then c squared will just be c squared. And now we just need to work this out. 9 squared is 81 plus 12 squared is 144, and that's equal to c squared. 81 plus 144 is equal to 225, and that equals c squared. So the length of this side squared is 225. So to find the length of the side, we now need to square root it. So c would be equal to the square root of 225. And the square root of 225 is 15. And that means the length of that line is 15. So we were asked to work out the distance between the points negative 5, negative 8, and 4, 4. So the answer would be 15. And that's it. So in this video, we've been looking at how to find the distance between two points, or how to find the length of the line joining two points. And to do that, I would just use Pythagoras' theorem. I would just join up the points, create a little right angle triangle, and then use Pythagoras' theorem, and that'll tell you the length of the line or the distance between those points. And that's it.